this lecture I'd like to walk you through the different appliances that I'll be controlling with my Raspberry Pi Bench computer and you can use those as inspiration and uh, decide on what else is it that you could control as well using the exact same setup. Uh, as far as this lecture is concerned I have uh, appliances and devices that I'll be controlling that are broken down into two major categories. The first one are uh, mains appliances. So these are appliances that you normally connect to uh, mains power. The second are uh, DC appliances. So these are appliances that you uh, plug into a DC power supply and not directly into mains power, such as this fan fume extractor and an LED strip. Because these two are quite different in the type of power that they consume, one is to plug into the uh, mains power, the other one just on a transformer and power supply, uh, the requirements, the control requirements are slightly different and they require a different approach for each one. So I'll start with the simpler one of the simple category, which is just the DC devices. For example, I've got this LED strip. What I've got in here is an LED strip. It's a flexible strip with an adhesive backing. You can see that here I purchased on eBay a channel, aluminium channel with a diffuser. This is this white strip that diffuses the light and just makes it nice and even. And you can probably see that this is a 12 volt DC device. So regardless of the length of the LED strip, you need to provide it with 12 volts. And you can, you can cut the strip at the designated positions. There's a little um, scissors symbol that shows you where is it that you can cut, then solder leads uh, here and then connect those leads to a DC power supply. This is something similar, or oh, this is not exactly, not just something similar, but it's exactly what I've done here. I'm just going to turn the camera for a second, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So on my desk right now, I've got an LED strip, it's a 12 volt LED strip. I soldered two wires to it and then using the screw terminals I connected the LED strip to a 12 volt power supply and that provides some illumination to my bench and I'll be controlling that through my Raspberry Pi bench computer. Exactly the same thing happens with this fan. So I designed or constructed a fume extractor based on computer fans and let's see, maybe we'll just see it here. This is a 12 volt fan. I combined two of those together, uh, sandwiched a carbon filter in the middle to provide some cleaning of the air. Not all of it will be, will go through it, of course, and will escape from the edges, but the bulk of the air will be cleaned and then will pass through the other side nice and clean. And uh, similarly to the LED strip, I, I attached the fans to a lead and then at the end of the lead I've got a screw terminal that I will be plugging into my Raspberry Pi using the uh, Pi Face Relay Plus uh, relays to control it. Now the main consideration for these two DC devices that I will be driving is really the ability of the relays in the Pi Face Relay Plus to drive. And looking at the specifications, I can see that uh, these little relays, these white boxes in here, can drive um, up to, I think, 20 volts and two amps of power. So the LED strip and the fan are within these specifications. So you need to be very careful not to connect these relays to a device that potentially can draw more power. Otherwise you will damage the board and your Raspberry Pi. So we are okay with that. No problems here. Now the next 
category of appliances that I want to drive are the, these main appliances. These operate at, in Australia at least, at 240 volts, both of them, so they are way above the capabilities of the PiFace Plus relays to drive. So as I said in my previous lecture, I'll have to use something like this to drive these larger loads. The idea is that I'll be using a 3.3 volt input to turn on and off or energize the relay on this driver board. So still though, I need to make sure that the, the relay in here is capable of driving these larger loads. The rating is 10 amps and 250 volts. So up to those numbers, I'm, I'm okay to drive external devices. So whatever you decide to drive, you need to make sure that your relay will be able to take the load. So in my, in my case here, let me just try this a bit closer and I'll zoom in. <laughs> just let me, I've only got two hands here. All right. So I'm going to zoom into that so you can see the label. All right, there you go. So you can see that this is a 48 uh, watt device rated at 220 to 240 volts. So that's not even a half an amp. It's well within the ability of this relay to drive. So I'm quite confident that this is going to work just fine with my relay. And what about my SMD rework? Let's me let's zoom out on that. So what about the uh, this Yihua SMD rework station? Let's check out what we know about this and the power that it needs to operate. So here, zoom in. You can see that the rated current is six amps. It's getting closer to the 10 amps that my relay plus, sorry, my external relay, the five volt relay can take, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a bit more than half the tolerance of my relay. So again, I'm confident that uh, the external relay driver will be able to support this external mains device. Uh, the other nice thing is that both of the devices, the mains devices that I'm planning to drive have got their own fuses. So the SMD rework station has got its own fuse, plus the, the soldering iron also has its own fuse. So they give me a bit of extra protection in case I uh, short something or I, I attach uh, as I am putting together the bench computer. Now, before I finish this lecture, uh, I wish to reiterate that working with main devices uh, is dangerous and it can be fatal. So uh, I don't recommend you doing anything that I demonstrate unless you're absolutely sure that you understand what is going on and that you are adequately protected. Uh, I uh, remind you that I'm using uh, one of these devices. It's a residual current device. It provides just a little, a little bit of extra protection in case um, I do something wrong and I have current that is flowing from the device to me and then via me to the ground and that has the potential to cause a lot of damage plus death. I'll be talking more about residual current devices in a separate lecture because it's a very important topic. And of course, you need to take all the various precautions, make sure that your home has got one of these things as well in its uh, fuse box. In Australia, at least after the 1990s, every new home must have these devices in its fuse box. So the one that I'll be using here is just an additional layer of protection. Okay, let's move on to the next lecture now, where I'd like to talk a little bit more about this device the residual current device.